And now we have the government segment on impact. I'm your host, Nick Barber, for the government segment, and my guest this week was Harry Buffardi. Harry Buffardi is the supervisor for the town of Rotterdam, New York, and he's the former sheriff, long-term sheriff for Schenectady County. He'll be talking about his career as sheriff, uh, his responsibilities as supervisor, and his teaching experiences at Schenectady County Community College. So let's watch my interview with Harry Buffardi. Hi everyone and welcome to Impact. I'm Nick Barber, your host for the government segment. And today our guest is Harry Buffardi. Harry is the supervisor of the town of Rotterdam in Schenectady County. Welcome, Harry. Thank you, Nick. How are you? We're My no pleasure. strangers, No, are we're we? not. Huh? No, we're not. We go back a long way. Long time we've known each other, served in government. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Not my service, yours. Well, we can talk but, about uh, ours, too. Thank you so much for coming, uh, taking time out of your busy schedule. And you are busy because I am. Uh, you have a lot of roles, but the most important one uh, that we'll talk about today um, is the uh, supervisor pos position for the town of Rotterdam. But before we get there, Harry, how did you get started in government? You were in law enforcement. You were law the sheriff uh, for Schenectady County. How many years were you sheriff? I was sheriff for 10 years, but I was with the sheriff department for 36 years. Yeah, so prior to a, that, you were correction officer, moved up the ranks of Moved major. up the ranks, yep, lieutenant major, worked undercover for DEA for five years. Uh, had had uh, various components of my career that brought me to the, the office of sheriff. Right. What prompted you to get into public service and run for sheriff? Can you remember back? Uh, well, I, I know what prompted me to get into government service. Yeah. I, I, I got out of the Marine Corps, and it was a natural transition oh. for me to go into law enforcement. Sort so, of a paramilitary absolutely, thing? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I entered in 1973 and started working my way up through the ranks. Yeah. Uh, uh, about 18 years out, uh, I became the undersheriff, which was second in command to the sheriff. So oh, that yes. was an appointed position. I worked for Bill Barnes. Bill Barnes. Uh, in yeah. that capacity, I was very content being the undersheriff, and everything yeah. was going fine. And one day he says, I'm not running anymore. You're the guy. Uh oh. And it was kind of, well, okay, how do I deal with this? So then, I know, ran for sheriff in yeah. 1998 and got elected uh, and served from 1999 until 2009 yep. in that capacity. But it, it was a progression of my career. It wasn't yeah. necessarily a political goal of mine. It was a right. progression of well, my career. Well, it was career. a good track, and it was a natural for you after Barnes retired. Yeah. Uh, the undersheriff was more of an administrative position. Is that what it was? or how, what? It is the administrative position. Yeah. It's almost like the CEO, where you do the operations <clears> stuff. Right. The, uh, the sheriff does more promotion of the, of, of the job. And yes. The, you know, attends different meetings and events. and. Uh, right. The undersheriff actually does kind of the nuts and bolts stuff of the sheriff's department. So I was operationally very active, yes. but kind of separate from the political component. Well, you must have learned a lot about administration and law enforcement and criminal justice as an administrator. Administratively yeah. speaking, it's, you know, it's particularly in the state, it's different than other forms of business. Yeah. So there's a whole learning curve involved in that. Yeah. And the sheriff was the chief uh, law enforcement officer for the counties under chief, the charter in the state? Chief, that yeah, work? under the state constitution, yeah. chief, uh, the conservator of the peace, chief law enforcement officer, so to speak. Not right. necessarily funded for that, yes. but certainly entitled with certain uh, capacities yeah. in that regard. Yeah, so did you enjoy your career as sheriff? Oh, I did, yeah, yeah very uh -huh. much so. Not just my career as sheriff, my entire career with the sheriff's department. Yeah. I was. I was very proud the day I walked in the door, and I was very proud the day I walked out the door. Yeah, and you served with distinction. You really did. You Thank know, you. You did a good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so then, after your law enforcement career, all of a sudden you became, not all of a sudden, but eventually you became an educator. Yes. Well, it was so during my how, actually, it How was, did that work? It was during. I remember you were, you were getting your master's degree at yes. Syracuse. Yes. Yeah, before you achieved it, which you did. Yes. Uh, and then you were sort of leaning towards education. So what happened? I was involved in a component of education even as, a, as an employee of the Sheriff's Department. I was right. an adjunct professor at Schenectady Community College. Yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. I was a chairman yeah. of the board. Great, absolutely. Great I'm, place. Uh, uh, it's, it's a wonderful place. Yes. Uh, so I was an adjunct there since 1995. Uh, I would teach one or two courses a semester. I taught all the courses in the criminal justice program. I was very uh, comfortable with the college. And right. then a vacancy opened in 2008 mm -hmm. for a full-time position. Yes. So I um, put my name in and just kind of saw the way it traveled. It was uh, very competitive. And yes. then the job was offered to me. Then I had to make yes. a decision how I wanted, wanted to do that. Yes. Um, part of that was the person I was replacing was there for almost 40 years, so I didn't wow. think that that full-time position would come up again in my professional lifetime. Yes. So I took the job uh, with great satisfaction. So I'm a full-time professor at Skanky County Community That's College wonderful. in the same program that I've taught in for many years. That's wonderful. That was a natu another natural progression for your uh, career. 
it, with your talents and your background. And I think it's important from a learning capacity for students to have someone who has an academic background yes. and also professional background. Right? Right. I've, I've, I've walked the walk, I've got a million stories, yes. and I think those things are important components to a total education. Yeah, uh, a lot of practical application, OJT and on the job yes. experience. Yeah, yes. yeah. A million stories, which reminds me, we'll probably have to do this in a series. <laughs> okay. Because with well, all you've done over the years, uh, you know, we're going to have you come back again. Um, well, let's move on to your current position, Supervisor yes. of Town of Rotterdam. When did that begin? Well, I retired in 2009 from the office of sheriff, and um, my life became much less complicated at that point. Uh, uh, I was out of politics. I wasn't uh, involved in that. I, I, I kept contacts. I knew I had friends and, and people involved in it. And then uh, I was recruited. Uh, about a year and a half ago to run for supervisor of the town that I live in, town mm -hmm. that I grew up in. Yes. Um, and pushed in that direction and I, I, I turned it down and you said really, no. You really had to weigh that decision, didn't you? Well, I, that I, I said you no. Were, I you said didn't no. say gung ho, let's go. Oh, no, no, no. You I really said, had to think about it, I didn't said you? no maybe ten times. <clears throat> yeah. And then they kept coming back and in their recruitment efforts, I, I, I knew at my, my very heart I was a public servant. Yeah. And I also loved the town that I lived in, yeah. and I felt that there was some need there. Yeah. So to reconcile the two, to bring them both together, I decided to run for the office of supervisor. Uh, and another, I did, and I won. And uh, uh, so here I am with yet another. And uh, I, I might add that I'm still a full-time professor at Skanky County yes. Community College. The supervisor position is uh, theoretically a part-time job. Quote, but unquote, yeah, yeah, but it involves an awful lot, yeah. involves an awful lot of work. I'm sure you're going 24-7. And uh, scheduling, organization, yes. living by the calendar. Uh, yes. That's the only way it can be done. So I'm sure you're a very busy guy. Um, it's a brief interview, but let's talk about some of the issues that are going on in Rotterdam. Uh, what are your goals now that you've come back? I mean, you live there, but now as supervisor, it's a different view, isn't it? Yeah. So what are some of the things that you'd like to change or some of the programs that are... Well, some of uh, the things I have your... changed is uh, we, we changed the rules of order of meetings. We no longer have uh, bantering back and forth between the audience and uh, privilege of the floor. We try yeah. to bring more distinction to that and Good. more rules of order. Uh, certainly the biggest issues we face are uh, taxation. Yeah. And um, it's a difficult economy we're in. We're, yes, it we're is. We're capped with a 2% sales tax, or excuse me, property, property tax, tax cap. cap which is really kind of an anomaly just because uh, if you do nothing, uh, the budget will exceed 2% just with um, pensions. That, that and, is cool. Uh, you know, just yeah. uh, just with, with, with pensions, health care, things of that nature. Right. So the gravity of the situation will pull you down unless you do creative things. Yeah. You know, reduce costs of government, try and bring in more funding, uh, try and consolidate services, try and do shared services, do yeah. a number of different things to accommodate that. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult balance. So the toughest charge is to hold the line because the biggest issue is property taxes with people in that tax the top rate. The top three issues in Rotterdam, and I, I'm guessing other communities too, yeah. are taxes, taxes, and taxes. Yeah. And yeah. you have GE like the city of Schenectady does, so that's a big taxpayer. And GE, you know, within their own right is always, you know, reviewing their assessments and usually there's legal challenges, which we can't talk about specific challenges, but GE is a big taxpayer. Yes, so our largest market, taxpayer. Your lar well, your largest and probably the largest for the city of Schenectady too. So. Uh, Schenectady and Rotterdam uh, have to deal with uh, uh, equity and fairness for yes. large taxpayers. And if there's changes in a large taxpayer, that's a dramatic change to your 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 revenue, your tax levy, uh, right. in a town Correct. or a city. So right. uh, those are big challenges. Well, know? particularly the GE case. I mean, we, there's been tax tertiary or legal tax challenges in the town of Rotterdam for decades. They're perennial. They're for they're decades. All, they come every two or three years. And that's and they what refile. large corporations do. I mean, you can't blame them for trying. You know, that's what they do. Well, yeah. I think they're looking for stability. They want yeah. to know what the cost is going to be 10 years from now, uh, and it's not always held its own. We, uh, the budgets have been very spiky. Right. They go up, they go down, they go up, they go down, yeah. and uh, they have difficulty dealing yeah. with it. And I think in the town of Ryerson, we would like to bring some stability to that. Yeah. Also, the cost of fighting the issues of yes. going to these tax sheriffs, and, and you lose in the process. It yes. costs Minimum a couple hundred thousand dollars to hire lawyers and assessors sure. and engineers to do all this stuff. <clears throat> yep, appraisals. Even, to, tr yeah, even no. to try and hold your own, it is difficult. Yeah. And the environment is tough. Yeah. Uh, it's contentious. It's face-to-face yeah. uh, -face, uh, uh, controversy. I, I would like, to, and I'm, I, I can't divulge too much, but I'm going to actively pursue negotiating a long-term deal with GE that's suitable for the town of Rotterdam, mm -hmm. doesn't put us in a hole, yeah. and gives them s some stability too. 
Well, that would be that would that be a win-win for both if you could achieve that because then you could predict your budgeting, you know what your yes. anticipated revenues are, and they would know. Uh, so the longer term, within reason, is is probably a better thing. So Correct. That's, and take it out of the courts. Good. Take yeah. it out of the courts. Yeah. So there's a lot of lawyers yeah. making a lot of money doing yeah, this stuff, true. and uh, I true. think we both suffer as a result. That's true. Good idea. Well, Rotterdam has got a lot of senior citizens. The whole yes. county does, but Rotterdam particularly. Yes. Because it's a wonderful community. It's still a nice place to live. It's as a they great say. place to live. Yep. And um, you have a special, you know, uh, demographic of senior citizens. Yes. So how does that affect Rotterdam compared to some other communities? Or how do you gear to senior citizens? You have programs and we have programs uh, that are part of our government. We yeah. have a senior center on Hamburg Street that's yeah. uh, probably the most active senior center I think in the capital district. Yeah. That certainly charges the least amount of money and it's uh, certainly consumer friendly and. People yeah. actually travel to Rotterdam to attend our events and oh, that's uh, nice. uh, yeah. um, uh, go to our dinners and uh, uh, recreate there. It's, right. it's certainly very active. We also have another component, Rotterdam Junction, a, a meal site that uh, operates two days a week, and they're and they're active during those two days a week. It, 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 we we are an aging population in, yes. in Rotterdam, so <coughs> yes. um, we see some movement in that regard. Yeah. Uh, well, that's throughout the Northeast, probably, but particularly in our county, we have a lot of senior citizens over 65 and a growing population yes. increases. Yes. But it's great that you take care of your seniors and it still remains a great place to live. I love Rotterdam. I've got a lot of relatives there. Mm -hmm. It's a great place. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have much time left. Uh, do you have anything else that it was on your agenda? Or no, controlling, costs of, controlling yeah. costs of government is certainly a big issue. Bring in new sources of revenue. Right. Economic development is certainly part of it. We're seeing the, the town amorph a bit. It used to be like a sleepy bedroom community, single family homes. Yes. That was a, in a, su a suburb of the city of Schenectady. Yes. We're converting a little bit now. We're having more apartment living. Uh, we're certainly trying to bring in industry and commerce. You have we're housing to, starts? You got, yes, yeah. yes. A lot of communities don't have new housing Most starts. Most of our housing starts right now are actually in multiple unit uh, issues. I see. Uh, uh, which it's still brings in rooftops right. to be able to you know spread out the cost and uh, is helpful to us. And geared towards seniors, probably, because of your yes. population. Yes, yes. Well, that's great. We've been visiting with Harry Buffardi, the supervisor for the town of Rotterdam, and the former sheriff for Schenectady County, my old friend, and I am so happy that you came to visit us. Uh, you come back and see us again soon because there's so much to talk about, uh, about what's going on in the town of Rotterdam, New York. So thanks for joining us, Harry Buffardi, supervisor, Town of Rotterdam. Thank Come you. back again. Will I you? will certainly. Okay. Thank you, you. Been, thank you, Harry. You've been watching Impact. Stay tuned for our next episode next week. Uh, great to see you. Take care. Remember, we love to hear from you, and we have been hearing from you. So continue to send us your comments or suggestions by email. Contact us at impact@proctors.org, or go to Facebook and like us on Facebook. Go to Impact Show on Facebook. Thanks for watching.